Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. So today I'm going to take you guys on a little farm tour and this is going to be a little crop progress video. Uh, we're going to visit, visit at least the four main farms. Right now we're standing at the main farm, which we refer to as Rockville. And um, I'm just going to show you guys how the crops are doing. Today is June 26th and it's just afternoon. And uh, I'm standing out here in the soybeans. Now, as many of you know, we've been cultivating lately and we've been cultivating as much corn as we can. It's been very wet and we haven't had a very good chance to cultivate very, very much. Um, but dad hopped into the 4020 and he actually cultivated some of the beans out here. And let me show you guys the difference between what is cultivated, even with soybeans, if it's just kind of lightly cultivated versus not. So if you look right here, you'll notice on the left is what was cultivated and then everything, uh, this is actually the line right here, half of this was cultivated and then everything from here over wasn't. And you can see that there is a little bit more weight there on the soybeans that were cultivated. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the truck, I'm gonna get Jamie and I'm gonna have her dig up a corn plant as well as a soybean plant. And I'm gonna show you guys the differences, uh, try to show you guys some of the differences in the roots um, versus the corn and the soybeans. Typically, you don't really wanna cultivate soybeans uh, unless you run the cultivator really lightly across the ground because what soybeans will tend to do is their roots bush out compared to corn. Corn has a tendency to grow its roots more downward and that makes it a little bit more safe to cultivate. Uh, but what we've been doing is cultivating slash side dressing. I believe Travis is just side dressing today. I'm not even totally sure if he's running with the cultivator down. Um, we're kind of on a running on a tight schedule with all the rain that we've been getting. Today is the first day that we've been able to get out there and cultivate in about a week. So uh, he's trying to get as much done as he possibly can. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get to my 30 acre corn no-till cornfield to side dress that. Uh, but that's looking pretty good, uh, so I'm not really too worried about side dressing it. But I, this is just one of those interesting differences between what does get cultivated and what doesn't. Now, if you look over towards the big patch over there, uh, you guys may be able to tell that it looks like it's kind of alternating. And the reason being is because the big patch, we uh, split the planter up. So there's two different varieties of corn growing out there. I don't have their numbers on me right now, but it is kind of interesting to see how different they grow. And there is, we are able to tell what the yields will do this fall and see which one will yield better. So having a yield monitor on the combine is one thing that is really nice to be, have and be able to do little tests like that. And um, as I've said before, since we've started cultivating and side dressing, uh, we have noticed a difference in yield. Uh, it really just, a, varies on where you put the fertilizer down at um, but we've seen at least a three bushel increase across everything we cultivate and depending on where it is or how the soil what the soil conditions are it really varies jamie's here she's got the shovel i'm gonna have her dig up a plant of her choosing and we're gonna take it over to the truck hmm A little gummy. It's very wet underneath there yet. So we've got the corn plants here and we've got one soybean plant here. Now look at the difference in these roots. Firstly, you can definitely tell that the soybean roots are a lot smaller because the soybeans were planted second and the corn's had more grow time. Corn overall is a larger plant so it grows more robust roots. It's got auxiliary roots that it grows as well as the ones that grow under, directly underneath the plant. So on the soybeans they've got nodules on them which are used to fixate nitrogen. Here's one of those nodules. If I pull that off of there and I crack it open what you'll notice is that it's actually red on the inside. The reason it's red is because soybeans utilize bacteria which make leg hemoglobin, which is similar to kind of like the hemoglobin in your blood, which gives it that red hue. And what it does is it fixates the nitrogen 
into the ground. Soybeans have developed a, a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria and they both benefit from it. The bacteria have plenty of nutrients from the soybean plant that they get from the roots and in return the soybean plant gets nitrogen. If your soybean plants don't have a lot of nodules on them, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that there might be a lot of nitrogen in the soil that the soybeans are utilizing. But if there isn't a lot of nitrogen in the soil, then the soybeans will put out more nodules so that they can fixate more nitrogen. Look at all the nodules on that guy. That's pretty much everything I've wanted to show you at this farm. This is our highest yielding farm. Um, as far as corn goes, we can pretty much expect well over 200 every year, uh, unless there are weather issues. And this year, I really expect this farm to yield well over 200, um, which is the norm. But we are going to head down to Travis's place next, which is the first farm that was in the family. And um, I'm gonna fly the drone down there. That is also our largest farm. And um, uh, to keep this video kind of in a reasonable length, I'm gonna try to do these fairly quickly because uh, if I spend too much time talking about all of them, this could be like an hour or two long video. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna head down to Travis's place next. I'm gonna fly the drone up. We're gonna look for anything. We're gonna check on the crops down there. I have not flown the drone down there yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing if any sinkholes opened up or anything like that. Hopefully not. Uh, but it has been a wet spring and sinkholes will tend to open up when it is fairly wet. So can you guys do me a favor during this video and keep an eye on my hat because I've lost pretty much one hat every day in the last week. I don't know where they go. I don't know what happens, but I'm running out of hats. <laughs> and typically if I lose a hat, I'll just not wear one, but the gnats are just so terrible that um, since I have black hair, they just love to go after my head, which is why I'm wearing a nice bright shirt because they have less of a tendency to um, attack you. Anyway, let's head down to Travis's. We're gonna pull in there and launch the drone up and have a look. Three out of four of our farms are very close together. So the three farms that we live on uh, are the closest ones that are all together. And Travis's is about a mile south and I'm about a mile east. And um, they're all pretty well close. The one that is a little bit further away is about a 10 minute drive away. And it is the smallest farm out of the four. you guys are getting a first-hand look at British so somebody got stuck with the sprayer in one of the ditches so I'm gonna go pull them out 46 40 I think it's probably better stuff if I just try back up to him so that way I don't have to spin around in the soybeans interesting looks like Andrew is still running so we are now on the British farm now British is our oldest farm it's been in the family since the 50s uh, my grandparents had milked here until they built the new setup at Rockville 
And um, after they had moved up there, my parents had also milked in this barn for a period of time after. So this, this farm has an interesting setup. It's our largest farm. Uh, it comes in over 250 acres and the pasture on it is in the shape of a giant U. Uh, unfortunately, it splits about 40 acres off from the rest of the field. Uh, but this pasture right next to us goes all the way around the farm. Probably it would take about a mile to go all the way around. And it actually comes right up here on the other side of the buildings. And um, it's got quite a bit of pasture on it. Uh, overall, as far as how this farm yields, it uh, doesn't really compare up to Rockville, but this farm has a lot of rocks on it as well, as well as sinkholes. Lead mining was huge back in the late 1800s, so it's had a little over 100 years. There's just a lot of rocks on this farm, and there's also a lot of mine shafts. So what that means is that there are a lot of sinkholes. When you get a lot of rain, sometimes a sinkhole will just open up because the mine shafts cave in, which isn't always a very good thing, especially if you're working down here at night. So that's pretty well the gist about this farm. Um, since we're pretty short on time um, and we have the other farms to stop at yet, I'm um, not gonna spend too much time on this farm, but the crops down here look fairly decent. From above, the crops always will look worse. Um, but once we get a little bit further into the season, the corn will close up some of those streaking that you'll see in the drone footage. Um, but other than that, uh, it's a pretty nice farm. It does have some hills. It does have drainage issues, which is why, like, Andrew got stuck. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure there was a waterway pretty close to where he was. But we've had new ruts show up where we've never had them before. And um, this farm is contoured up front, which means that we alternate the crops back and forth. Sinkholes aren't really an issue up here. But in the back, uh, it's been in continuous corn for the last several years, as well as the 40. And... Um, I'm I think that we're probably gonna go to a no-till system here uh, Fairly soon. We never really had much of an issue with drainage like we have had this year um, Water likes to find the path of re least resistance. So as it rains um, The water is gonna go into the waterway, but over time the soil is gonna go into that waterway and The waterway is actually gonna get built up. So what will happen is the water will start draining around it and even just in random places, we have ruts where we've never had them before. So I don't really blame Andrew for getting stuck, um, especially in the size rut that he did since it was knee high. So that's it for this farm. We're gonna head out to my place next. We are now out at my place, also known as the Klein Farm. So it's named the Klein Farm after the uh, people who owned it before my grandparents. So this farm's in, a, in the shape of a large L. Uh, there's a lot of pasture on it. And here is all of the crop ground. So way back when they used to milk in the barn and um, I don't know when they quit or anything like that, um, but they used to use their hands to my knowledge. And uh, that was way back in the day. Looking out at the field, corn's looking pretty good. We have some alfalfa on the lower strips, as you can see there. It's headed out. Um, what I planted out at my 25 acres has not yet headed out. Uh, Dad's was planted a couple weeks before mine. But half of this farm, most of the farm, is still contoured. Um, as you can see there and back towards the back pond there are still contours there up on top of the hill is one giant piece and we do have had some erosion issues on this farm that we haven't had in the past but um, I actually was babysat on this farm when I was younger and we used to walk down to the pond which I'll take you out to the pasture next so now we're looking west towards the main farm at Rockville if you look carefully you can actually see it off in the distance so I think this farm has roughly 115 acres of pasture and all of my cattle are on this farm uh, right now what you're looking at is the big pasture my cattle are all out in what we call the Klein pasture 
which I'm heading over right now. There's two large pastures on this property. Uh, typically what we'll do is basically just let the cows out in the spring and once they start to grub everything off uh, in the fall, we'll set some hay in the barnyard and they'll come right in without a problem. But this farm, like I said, is in the shape of a giant L. Uh, it extends all the way back to the county road and you can actually see my 11 acre cornfield to the right there in the center. I'm going to fly over that and have a look at it, make sure there's no horses or anything in it. <laughs> See if we can spot my cows. I don't yet see them. You can see my creep feeder there. Still no cows though. No horses either, that's a good thing. I can't really tell because it's on my phone, but that looks like a couple cows to me. Anyway, that is the Klein Farm, or where I live. Uh, this farm was purchased by my grandparents in the 70s, I believe. It was the late 70s. And I think this was the last farm that my grandfather had purchased. Those were the three main farms. Now we're gonna be heading up to Burton, which is the final farm that I'm going to be covering. And I might try to find out where Dad and Travis are. Um, though we have four main farms, we do have other fields that we farm as well. Uh, these are just the main ones, so that if you guys ever hear me say one of the farm names, hopefully you'll have a little bit under, better understanding of where these farms are at. And um, these three are pretty well close together. This one's a smaller farm, it's only 90 acres, and this year it's all one crop. We didn't want to mess around with uh, going up and planting soybeans up there when we were kind of crunched for time. Because as many of you know, the spring has been pretty wet, and um, if we had literally wasted any time, we would have gotten our crops in late. All right, Rocket. Have fun. We're at Burton now, and this is where things get interesting. I lost my hat, didn't I? So this farm is roughly 90 acres, and it's located near Burton, which is why we call it Burton. And um, back in the day, it was called Maynard's, because like, kind of like Klein's, that was the owner before my grandparents. And, uh, Grandpa used to have a lot of story, stories about the guy who owned it before us. Um, a lot of interesting stories. But this farm actually has a still, was a still working cistern, which is essentially like a large underground storage tank for water. And um, you can open up the lid on it and see that it's just a bunch of water in the ground, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, this farm is interesting because it was in contours. And um, the, you can actually still see the contours, or at least I can from where I'm sitting. So the thing is with when you go down to plant corner beans, um, the reason we like to do rotations is because crops tend to do better when you rotate them with other crops. Corn works well when you rotate it with soybeans. So on this farm, since we planted it all back to corn, our contours are still visible. And what was corn last year we went in and I don't even think we chisel plowed it. I think we just went straight ahead and uh, VT'd it all. So we have corn on corn and we have corn on beans. So what is in corn on corn, it looks slightly less dark. Uh, it doesn't look like it's doing quite as well. 
Um, there will be a slight bushel difference, I think. This year we planted down the ridge line instead of sticking to the contours. And what I'm seeing with the drone is that there's not a whole lot of wash down the corn rows, which is a good thing. And um, something that we were afraid of is that, you know, with all the rain that we had gotten and with all the ditches that we have gotten everywhere else that we would see more erosion up here. But honestly, from what I can tell on the drone, it does not look bad at all. So you can still see that there's plenty of spots where the corn needs to fill in. Um, right now, I would say that the corn on corn ground is struggling just a little bit, but once we get a little bit further in the season, it should pull out of it. Um, we might still be able to see the contours going into harvest even, but we'll just have to wait and see. So we planted pretty far down the ridge line and we want to bring it back up a little bit. And you can see how it washed on the end of the field there. So what we did down closer to the trees, we want to bring that up a little bit more because all of those ridges, when you uh, go through and plant, you go through and VT, whatever, the tractor tire tracks, they all make little ridges that help slow down the water flow. There are quite a few gaps out there in this field. Uh, on the one side, I'm not totally sure what the difference was, but there are some gaps in between the rows on one side of the hill. It's hard for me to say at this point uh, what would have caused it. Um, I was off BTing another farm at this point when it was being planted. So that is the Burton farm. This farm has a couple buildings on it. Um, it's got a machine shed and a house on it, but the house is pretty much a ghost house. And um, it was scavenged for parts. And we never really had any desire to want to use it because it's a really old house. And uh, it is kind of nasty on the inside when we had purchased the farm. So anyway, that's it for this video, I think. I'm gonna go try to find Travis actually. And um, if I can find him, I know he's off cultivating one of his fields. Maybe I'll get some footage of him. Um, but yeah, this was a farm tour. Hopefully I cleared some things up for a lot of you who are wondering where the farms lay at in relation to each other. I know that I say the word Rockville all the time, but I've never really kind of laid it out where everything is. So the three main farms, about within a mile of each other. And the fourth farm, Burton, is about a 10 minute drive away. Now Travis's farm here actually fared pretty well with all that rain. Um, having buffer strips in between the strips really, really helped slow down that water. And I couldn't see any noticeable ditches. And um, it's just another one of those things, like if you live in an area where there's a lot of rain, um, or if we continue to get a lot of rain like we did this year, um, doing more buffer strips like that is certainly something that we would wanna look into. Um, but as far as the other farms go, what we really want to do is make sure that we have like our hay strips on all of the lowest strips. So that way it helps slow down the wash a little bit. Um, right now our hay strips are kind of just left over from 2012 without any pre-planning. And uh, we're working to slowly move them around a little bit. So dad already went home. I didn't get any footage of him. I met him on the way up here. I gotta get going home. Uh, this past weekend I was really really sick and I thought I was getting better but I just left home to come up here and I already need to go back home I this weekend I had some pretty bad pain in my kidneys and some other things and I thought I was getting better but I guess not I, it's really hurting so 
I'm gonna head back home. With that, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And uh, let, me get, let me know what you guys want to see in our next video. Thanks for watching.